yeah so now uh, let's uh, start with the uh, clock distribution aspect uh, now uh, we saw uh, clock generation now we'll see the uh, how to distribute the generated clock uh, within an uh, chip so that we have the uh, least uh, jitter and skew okay uh, so so the, one of the most uh, popular uh, topologies is known as the uh, x tree uh, model okay so you find here uh, in the center of the chip uh, through a uh, buffer the signal is uh, na, uh, provided here onto this line out here so uh, this is uh, forming an uh, edge like this okay uh, it's it's forming an uh, edge out here so now there are uh, four outputs uh, from here again another edge is formed here and in the end of this another edge is formed here so that's how the clock from here is uh, distributed here so uh, you you find if one which is connected here one flip flop and one which is connected here uh, will have uh, equal equal amount of an uh, uh, delay right or which is connected to the four uh, corners of this edge they will also have uh, equal amount of uh, uh, jitter right so so you will find that at, at, at localized if you see here uh, and, and these also like one two uh, three four five six seven eight all these will these points the uh, clock and uh, uh, skew will be the same right here also because of this distribution uh, you uh, uh, have you all understood what what is the distribution like it's an edge the clock is uh, fed here and then you have an edge here and the four uh, corners of the yeah this is the uh, clock routing structure this is a uh, clock routing structure so this is how the uh, lines will go within an uh, uh, chip out here right now uh, if you see here uh, the wire lengths are uh, generally uh, is okay, if, 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 as we move from the top edge to the uh, bottom edge they are uh, decreased uh, so that uh, at, at high frequencies uh, there is no uh, reflections okay so that is the uh, that was one of the concepts which they use so this is known as an recurrive uh, edge tree model okay so this was and, and each at each of these uh, nodes and you had an uh, flip tops which are uh, connected uh, so uh, and some advantages was it was an, a low cost wiring a uh, low uh, capacitances in the uh, right if you see we'll see um, other topologies and uh, which has got an higher capacitances the uh, disadvantages was uh, difficult to balance part delays due to asymmetric flip-flop uh, distribution right so uh, you will find if a uh, flip-flop is uh, so in this particular case uh, you have to uh, take care of that uh, right you you can't you have to uh, connect the uh, uh, flip-flops uh, at the same uh, level edge level right and uh, you if you connect an, an uh, uh, flip-flop at this level it may have a uh, different uh, 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 delay than if you are connecting in this so uh, one level is shown here there will be uh, further levels down here one edge two edge three edges are shown there could be more uh, this will again generate one more edge right so at, at each of these nodes so uh, as long as they are in the same level the jitter will be uh, same but if, if they are of different uh, levels uh, edge then there could be uh, 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 misbalance in the path okay uh, and then there could be uh, asymmetric no, uh, flip-flop uh, distribution also uh, like uh, not necessarily at these nodes and uh, flip-flops will be there so there could be uh, no, the, the currents in each of these branches will be uh, different and it is sensitive to uh, variations any uh, uh, process variations uh, no, and uh, these paths uh, no? so in these paths the signals are flowing so it has to be uh, uh, sir in this flip-flops are being referred to by uh, no there's uh, flip-flops are uh, these are the flip-flops which are shown here it, it is not shown here out here in each of these nodes it is only uh, this end point and uh, indicates and uh, flip-flops uh, the clock is available at that uh, end point sir uh, here flip-flops are donated by this uh, uh, this just it, it is shown in this area you could have an a uh, flip-flop connected and uh, uh, here uh, or here so this is what uh, it is uh, showing here okay so you can have uh, this model uh, so uh, some of the uh, disadvantage of that uh, sleeve rate degradation along r so uh, as you keep uh, moving from bigger edge to a uh, smaller edge the uh, sleeve will keep increasing so that is uh, one of the disadvantage and then uh, clock driver uh, right and uh, so if you see the the main uh, clock driver okay uh, it uh, it can uh, because if you see the uh, in a normal uh, edge out here the current which is flowing uh, uh, here right and uh, uh, in this edge 
uh, will be four times the current which is uh, flowing in this edge uh, and the current which is flowing here will be much higher so if you you will find uh, within the chip at, at various places okay the current density uh, is changing and it could cause asymmetrical uh, heating of the uh, chip okay so that is one uh, issue with this uh, particular uh, so you will have uh, because all th this h is getting uh, distributed like this so the current keeps increasing as we come from a lower h to higher h so so that is uh, one uh, issue uh, it, it is a uh, non-scalable uh, because uh, you can't keep decreasing the uh, size of the wires as we move from top to bottom uh, because then they will become uh, high resistance right uh, and if you use an, a large width out here then uh, the uh, main ones will become you know, very very uh, large so that is one of uh, another disadvantage there so uh, some of the problems have been uh, eliminated by using intermediate uh, buffers okay so you can have uh, intermediate uh, buffers out here uh, so uh, with that uh, we can uh, do keep proper sizing because uh, now there is no uh, reflection so these wire lengths can be kept constant also so by introducing buffers so obviously uh, by using uh, putting intermediate buffers uh, the complexity increases and the capacitance also uh, increases right so these are uh, some the uh, issues with this uh, H3 uh, model so uh, this particular uh, no, microprocessor an uh, alpha 21264 um, that uses an uh, uh, H type of an uh, 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 clock distribution network. Uh, if you see here, it uses 3% uh, of the metals 3 and 4 uh, for clock distribution uh, and then uh, the total uh, power uh, no, is 32% is for, for this particular uh, no, microprocessor. You can say it's on the uh, higher side. The clock distribution uh, power is uh, almost 32% of the total power requirement okay uh, for this particular microprocessor but it uses an uh, edge topology now uh, topology uh, generation you can use an uh, cad uh, uh, for uh, tree architecture uh, suppose these are all these dots are uh, indicating uh, flip flops uh, so uh, we will not uh, 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 make it uh, uh, take uh, uh, divide this into four uh, quadrants okay uh, based on the chip area right and then you know, the better option is to divide it into quadrants uh, depending on the total number of flip flops which is there uh, suppose in this particular case you have a certain number of flip flops so you are making it in, into one quadrant right keeping the number of you know, uh, flip flops uh, you know, equal in both these uh, sides right uh, so this need not be exactly in the center of the chip okay it, it actually this line um, uh, should uh, equally divide the number of uh, flip flops in the uh, chip so the the clock distribution will be done uh, the routing will be done uh, only after the uh, placement of the uh, uh, main uh, components is done here so this line indicates it. now if you see again this is again distributed into two now if you see here there are one two three four here one two three four here uh, here also there are four so uh, in this particular case it is almost at the center of the uh, chip whereas this partition of the uh, clock uh, is this is slightly uh, below here because uh, just to uh, see to it that there are uh, uh, the distribution of uh, flip-flop density is uh, same in, in both these areas right and similarly again uh, you again distribute it uh, uh, into a smaller smaller segments and then you make an H mm, so this the, this is the H uh, finally which comes out so this is the CAD tool when we use it uses this kind of uh, algorithm uh, to make the uh, edge so that uh, no, clock is uh, the load is uh, uniformly distributed among the various uh, branches okay uh, is it uh, understood yeah uh, prerna is it okay yeah so uh, uh, this is done now once you are uh, uh, generally a uh, clock a uh, clock you do it in a uh, different uh, metal plane right so uh, once your uh, major components are uh, placed uh, right uh, the layout is done and then you, uh, you do the clock distribution right uh, uh, once the entire uh, main components are uh, placed there the clock distribution is done so uh, the clock distribution plane will be like metal 3 metal 4 on a higher metal plate and then through bias you will get it down so they don't uh, really uh, affect your uh, like uh, layout so we we use multi uh, uh, metal layers in chips right these days so that is the reason and this is done at a uh, later uh, stage okay uh, so uh, 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 
uh, I'll, I'll uh, see that. Okay, uh, I may not be able to. Uh, I have picked it up in several uh, books, right? Uh, so uh, some of these designs, like from the microprocessor uh, na, uh, na handbook. Uh, so uh, so you will have to do some uh, bit of search. These are uh, especially in today's class. Okay, uh, in today's class, the entire uh, whatever I am covering is based on. Uh, my uh, research and and my uh, experience on uh, working on communication systems vcos and all and so these topics are not uh, straight away available in one uh, place in one book but it will be available for sure in uh, different books okay uh, so but now I'll, I'll try to uh, uh, search where all i have picked up these things and i'll uh, put it into one folder and try to share with you all okay uh, so this was the algorithm and and the uh, next uh, uh, no, kind of uh, clock distribution system uh, what we have is a, a grid like right? so you have uh, no, lines uh, running uh, throughout and you have buffers connected here right all all so you have so wherever you require this is on a higher metal plane so wherever you require the clock to be uh, pushed down you use an wire and and you pull it down to the uh, particular uh, flip flop right so uh, you make an uh, full uh, grid out here so uh, so the uh, advantages is uh, skew is 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 right uh, is determined by the grid density or not by uh, sensitivity of the load position right uh, uh, like uh, why i say grid density if i have an uh, coarse grid then the uh, skew will be more if you have an uh, like an, a fine uh, grid out here then the uh, skew will be uh, lesser out here right so this is an uh, uh, grid out here so you have uh, lines running like this here so while you move from here to here uh, here to here there will be a little bit of uh, uh, skew uh, but uh, no, if you have a coarse grid then uh, between two points the skew will be larger in that case so so whereas uh, no, this is an, uh, relatively tall tolerant to uh, process variations you will find and uh, this kind of an uh, 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 thick wires are run here and one full layer is used to make this in a uh, 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 grid like two layers will be required one horizontal and one uh, 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 vertical layers like uh, two layers of metal if you use you will find the entire grid and then wherever required you can use the uh, bias and you can uh, get the uh, uh, signal to the your ICs uh, to the flip-flops right so you can uh, do that uh, so it gives extremely low uh, skew values so these are some of the uh, advantages and it is used in deck alpha microprocessor okay so this is the one uh, and then uh, there are uh, some disadvantages huge amount of wiring and power so capacitance wire capacitance where are for uh, h3 uh, you don't have such a fine grid so that was uh, the, the capacitance total capacitance was lesser there so you have large uh, cap uh, yeah uh, uh strong drivers needed and uh, so uh, skew gets work if you have an a uh, courses uh, pitch uh, then so so uh, so you have to have the grid size based on your um, application yeah it can create a congestion for uh, other signals uh, no now if you uh, can earmark one uh, full uh, layer of metal like you have like for 45 nanometer i think you have 13 metal layers right so you can earmark you know, one or two one or a full horizontal layer you know, uh, for uh, uh, horizontal clock and one more metal layer for the vertical layer uh, for the vertical uh, clock and then wherever required you can use wire to get the signals right uh, that is two layers lost for a clock yeah so if you have uh, such kind of things two layers will be uh, lost for clock right so uh, so that that would happen so you can do that kind of thing also uh, and you can have some uh, hybrid architectures also where you have an uh, tree and cross links that means you have an uh, h tree uh, later on uh, you can uh, short these two uh, connections out here so uh, these guys they did some rajaram and uh, they have done some study you can uh, have a look at this paper so uh, it says uh, it uh, they have done some studies and they have found that by shorting these two at, at certain uh, locations which are far away then uh, you can uh, reduce a little bit of uh, uh, skew variability that is from 30 to uh, uh, 70 percent with a small wire penalty uh, uh, small small penalty on additional uh, wiring so uh, this is known as a tree press uh, i have given the reference out here uh, in case somebody uh, wants to uh, read further you can uh, do that so this is uh, just you just have to know these are some of the concepts which are 
uh, used okay you don't have to get into too much uh, details as of now uh, so also you have a uh, hybrid architecture uh, mesh plus uh, trees okay uh, so uh, remember all these things uh, will be supported by a uh, tcad tool okay it is impossible uh, for uh, us to do it in a, uh, in a manually right so uh, most of the tools which come uh, these days okay uh, they will have uh, one of one or the other an uh, 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 architecture already uh, embedded um, embedded in the uh, design so um, I, I don't i'm not very sure whether uh, they will uh, give the an uh, option to select the architecture so uh, depending on the uh, application one of the architecture style uh, will be selected and the tcad will do the uh, routing on unless you are uh, handling say 50 only 50 transistors or 50 flip flops and 100 flip flops then probably you can do some uh, uh, manual routing now, otherwise the uh, tcad tool uh, will do it we just have to uh, understand what are the kind of various uh, uh, topologies which are uh, available right uh, uh, we have the options to select H tree or mesh tree. Yeah, somebody uh, who is working in the industry confirms that we have an uh, option available here, right? Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, now uh, you you can have an uh, hybrid of mesh and tree. So this is the mesh, and at each node of the mesh you can have an uh, tree also, right? So these kind of uh, topologies are also. Uh, available so uh, that uh, that the tool uh, if it is giving these options you can only thing is with each of this you should know what is the advantage and uh, disadvantage of uh, all these things so depending on the application right it all depends on the application right if if i can uh, summarize these various topologies this will be like if you have an uh, pure an uh, edge network it is low cost a uh, higher uh, skew uh, widely used in ASIC design right uh, if you have an a hybrid a tree press cross links then a low cost the jitter will slightly uh, come down than a, a tree but it is uh, difficult to analyze and uh, problems okay and then if you have an uh, mesh uh, it is for very very low skew uh, but the uh, penalty is the power and uh, area right so it is used in modern uh, uh, processors and then you have this uh, uh, hybrid okay uh, hybrid uh, it is for when you are using an a uh, coarse uh, mesh right so uh, some disadvantages of the mesh uh, can be uh, avoided by using a very very uh, coarse mesh and then using a uh, local tree set those points wherever uh, required okay so these trees uh, need not be there everywhere uh, so once you make an uh, coarse uh, grid and then wherever there is a concentration of uh, uh, flip-flops in your chip uh, there you can uh, use these local trees th there okay as per the requirement so the the clock uh, architecture and uh, will be very very uh, specific to the uh, user right best architecture depends on the application so there is nothing like you know, this is the best one or you know, this is the best this is the best and uh, nothing like that it depends on the uh, actual uh, application so based on that you need to uh, select you know, one of the uh, architectures which your uh, tool uh, provides and accordingly uh, it will uh, you know, do the layout and thing and and the best you know, part of uh, modern day uh, tcats is uh, you can uh, uh, you know, like you are not actually fabricating the IC right so you can um, uh, use uh, two architectures and uh, run a detailed simulation and check the jitter and other performance uh, uh, area and you can uh, do a verification of uh, all the figure of merits for this various uh, uh, architectures and then decide the final architecture so um, like you are not actually fabricating so the TCAD tools these days uh, are so uh, no, strong that it, it gives a very very uh, realistic uh, results all the software CDA tools uh, and the layout tools and also you can uh, use one of the architectures and find what is the uh, best one uh, for your particular uh, application and accordingly uh, decide okay uh, so is uh, f max for each architecture uh, uh, no, uh, no. I think that the, the, nobody specifies that kind of, uh, uh, right? Uh, 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 limits. Uh, no? Okay, so it all uh, depends on uh, uh, no? the jitter which you uh, observe. Uh, no? After uh, no? during testing and verification, you will find okay, this is the observed. Uh, uh, if the jitter is more, uh, probably you will uh, try out and. Uh, different uh, clock architecture or you increase the uh, uh, the uh, what the size of these uh, uh, 
uh, interconnects uh, and then do a re-simulation and then uh, if you are not able to avoid the jitter uh, only then you might uh, think of uh, going for a lower frequency generally uh, the uh, uh, this comes in the uh, firstly your uh, circuit itself might uh, impose uh, restrictions on the clock not necessarily the uh, clock distribution system uh, because uh, major issues will be propagation delay uh, within the uh, right you know, uh, flip flops and those things so they will uh, essentially uh, decide the uh, clock frequencies but then obviously uh, finally when you do jitter also comes into the picture right okay uh, uh, yeah there are uh, it is computable um, because uh, there are some models available uh, for uh, computing now now uh, how does the tcad uh, do uh, the jitter analysis right okay because uh, there are certain uh, models which are available uh, the uh, the uh, parasitic capacitances and the resistances of these uh, wires uh, which are there right so uh, when the uh, tool runs it will uh, apply those models so there are several models available for modeling the uh, interconnect and wire delays so uh, the tool will run that and then uh, it will give you an uh, estimate right so it is you can say it is an uh, um, no, no, uh, it is uh, computable uh, it, the, it might give results uh, which is 10 percent variation of the actual uh, fabrication results but then uh, the, the uh, wiring modeling itself is, is probably one chapter which uh, which we will probably uh, cover it is there in our syllabus i guess okay we'll see that later on okay uh, so okay now uh, we are just uh, running a short of time so let me cover these two three slides uh, and, so uh, uh, what is a uh, clock gating okay now uh, clock gating is uh, like uh, suppose this is an a uh, d flip flop okay you will find here uh, the data remains in a, a zero out here okay the data is zero out here but every time the clock comes here if you see here this is zero here this is one here so since it is a zero here this will continue to remain one this will continue to remain zero no problem this zero is available this will continue to remain one but every time there is a clock here the output of this particular flip flop will change from zero to one one to zero but that is not going to change any uh, output out uh, make any change in the output because the data is zero so this gets fixed to zero this becomes one this becomes a zero this one so this flip-flop this these one one two three uh, four they don't make any transition whereas uh, the clock which is coming here this particular uh, uh, NAND gates uh, sorry uh, th these NAND gates they don't uh, uh, make uh, do make any change as long as the data is constant the data is continuously zero but here you will find uh, it is uh, transiting from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 so this will uh, uh, result in uh, some uh, 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 spurious uh, uh, power okay so we, there is something known as a clock gating okay so uh, what is uh, clock gating is uh, like you take a d here you put an xor gate here and then uh, you give it to an uh, 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 gating uh, 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 this is an and gate okay so if you see here uh, what happens is whenever there is an uh, a change of d with respect to the previous value so this is an xor gate only then this gate will be enabled and the clock will be given to the uh, d latch okay as long as the d and q are same uh, this and gate okay so it will be zero out here if d and q are same this will be zero here so this uh, and gate will be disabled so the clock will not come to the uh, latch and therefore there will be this spurious transition which is happening zero to one one to zero uh, that will be avoided is this concept clear to all of you okay uh, so so this is known as uh, clock gating so uh, th this is an uh, so these guys and uh, this reference is given here now uh, they did some uh, study and applying a uh, uh, clock gating on various equal to module multi multi uh, uh, multiplexer uh, i think and uh, a multiplier uh, flip flops adder alu scalar shift registers and uh, they found by uh, using clock gating they have been able to uh, reduce power from 60 milliwatts to uh, 50 milliwatts okay so this was one study which these guys uh, did okay uh, this was uh, one of my works uh, the, uh, in fact uh, here uh, uh, I, instead of mosfets uh, tfets have been used um, but the uh, but the clock gating concept remains same here uh, this is an uh, dynamic adder okay uh, what is a dynamic adder do uh, it will 
uh, no, this is the uh, carry module where uh, so initially this node is pre-charged to one uh, and then uh, after that uh, depending on abc a, this will be uh, pulled to uh, zero here so this is how and dynamic uh, uh, adder works like right you might have uh, studied dynamic uh, uh, circuits in your uh, previous semester now uh, generally uh, you have an a uh, carry and then you have an inverter uh, with, uh, which generates the uh, from carry bar it generates an uh, carry signal uh, so now what i did was i inserted one more transistor out here and gave the clock here right uh, so what it does is if you see here uh, uh, this was uh, this the, uh, uh, the conventional uh, no, uh, dynamic full adder uh, without this tr transistor, a plain inverter out here. Then you will find here, uh, even though in, in this particular uh, region, if you see here, uh, B is 0, A is 1, uh, A is 0, B is 1. Right? In this, the carry has to be uh, 0. But this node keeps getting, it's a dynamic adder. So every every time the clock goes low, this gets charged to 1. If get this gets char charged to 1, this ch gets charged to uh, 0 here. So you will find in a, this uh, spurious, although the data is not changing here, there is a uh, spurious transition here. So I did a clock gating in the inverter uh, stage out here. So what has happened is, though those spurious, uh, so the cl this gets uh, disabled, okay, whenever the clock is low out here, this gets an, uh, disabled, this inverter, so it, it holds the charge. That is what we uh, learnt in some of our earlier circuits, right? So this spurious transitions which is happening here, so uh, that gets uh, eliminated, okay? So uh, this was uh, how a clock gating, a kind of clock gating uh, was used uh, in this particular uh, to improve the uh, performance. So from from here to here, uh, almost some uh, 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 20 to 30 percent of uh, power reduction was observed, right? Because uh, every transition uh, requires enough uh, power, right? So that 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 was uh, 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 reduced out here by the by avoiding. So if the activity uh, cycle is low, then the uh, power activity cycle. If if data is remaining constant for a longer period, uh, then uh, the power saving will be large because in that case unnecessarily this will keep making uh, transitions. Whereas this is going to remain a constant if you have applied uh, clock gating uh, out here, right? So this is uh, one application of an uh, clock gating out here which we discussed. Okay, uh, and and uh, we just have five more minutes, so I'll just uh, uh, so here and if you see here in these circuits and uh, tunnel FETs were uh, used out here. So if you see in, uh, MOSFETs generally you have an uh, N region, N region, and and MOSFET you have a P. So when you uh, apply an, 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 a gate voltage here, so this barrier will be reduced. So you have an, uh, an electrons a path will be made for electrons to travel between uh, N to no, uh, from n to uh, no, uh, n plus to n plus region here right where the tunnel first and uh, it's slightly different uh, you have an, an uh, uh, p plus here uh, n and then an, uh, it, this is uh, n or a kind of intrinsic so p p i n structure it has right so when you given a uh, gate voltage out here actually this is p region uh, this will be reverse biased and you have the electrons you know, uh, from the uh, now conduction band now tunneling uh, here okay so uh, so this this particular uh, na, na structure you don't have electrons coming from conduction band to conduction band right instead it is uh, na, from the uh, from the valence band here right from the valence band the electrons tunnel through uh, and when you give an very very uh, so these channels have to be very uh, narrow it has to establish electric fields of few megavolts right so once that is done you are able to uh, these electrons will uh, tunnel through and it will uh, create a conduction path so the uh, advantage with the uh, tunnel FETs is that uh, when there is no gate on a voltage applied you will find uh, this junction is reverse biased you give a positive voltage at the drain right so n and p so this becomes an a reverse biased junction so hence the leakage currents are very very low but the on currents are also low so so tunnel fets are good for low uh, power applications so uh, as of now uh, we don't have many artifacts which is in a uh, uh, fabricated and you, we don't have microprocessors because it is uh, thermally not very stable and still uh, it is an uh, emerging uh, research area so this was uh, just just i just wanted to uh, sh when i shared this circuit i thought uh, since i have used uh, tunnel fits here i'll give an, a brief introduction to uh, tunnel fits okay uh, i think uh, uh, we are running out of time so i uh, will uh, stop it here uh, in the next class uh, uh, 
uh, I think uh, 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 we'll see uh, more about uh, probably uh, what's in the next class I don't uh, remember